Hello everybody, this is Bodrich. A new release of i3 is released. Uh, or not really, it's just a bug fix release uh, 4.19.1. Um, just these three fixes here in the release note at least. Um, two of them are related to the, the default configuration that is configuration file that is generated when you first install i3. And the other one is looks like some uh, important uh, uh, bug that they have fixed here. Um, it looks like something that must have been introduced in 4.19. I because it, it whatever it's good that they have fixed it, but no new features. And that's actually what I want to talk about here because there's not much to say about this uh, version here. Um, a month ago. Airblader, the maintainer of uh, i3, posted this uh, update on the future of i3 post on the uh, i3 subreddit. And this was a very interesting read and, and really, I, I, I like this. Um, I will try, I will rant a bit about this here. Uh, I don't know if you have seen this. Uh, but uh, I will read some parts of it here. We have updated our GitHub issue tem template as well as added a new project goal on the i3 uh, homepage. I've actually not seen that, but do not add further uh, complexity when it can be uh, avoided. We are generally happy with the feature set of i3 and instead uh, focus on fixing bugs and maintaining it for stability. New features will therefore only be considered if uh, the benefit clearly outweighs uh, the additional complexity. And we encourage users to implement features using the IPC whenever possible. Uh, so, yeah, they will more or less try to avoid adding any features uh, at all. If they don't like... Um, clearly outweighs uh, the additional complexity. And I, 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 I don't know what that would be. Uh, and I don't think the developers of i3 either knows. If, if they did, they would implement it. Uh, but there would be no workspace grouping, blah, 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 blah. And since the IPC um, API, whatever, uh, is uh, so good on i3 it you can add so much with uh, building a little, little third party uh, uh, tool or something like that to add features so i think it's i think it's really really nice and this poster it doesn't change anything really because this i uh, the, the i3 project have had this stance uh, for a long time. As long as I can remember, they have been extremely conservative uh, when it comes to adding new features. But it's it's nice to see them writing it out like this. Uh, and they very seldom add new features. But some features have been added, you know, like the swap feature and stuff like that. Um, but the, from now on... Don't expect new commands like swap, for example, in i3. Uh, I would be very surprised if that happens uh, in the near future. And with near future, I mean like five years. Uh, they may introduce gaps into i3. I don't think they will. I hope they don't will uh, do that. Because that, in my opinion, that's a very big feature that... Uh, very much not uh, outweighs uh, the, the complexity of introducing it, or however they phrased it. Um, but I think I think it's good, uh, and this post got uh, lots of uh, upcomings. You know, um, 346, so it's supported by the community. Uh, all the comments here are. Maybe Airblader have uh, have uh, 
maintained the comment section, so to speak, also because all, all, all comments are really positive about this. Um, but uh, but I think that's great, and I think what this will lead to, this will definitely not uh, mean that uh, the end of I3. Uh, I think it, it will actually become quite a lot more popular after this, when this gets uh, known by people not using I3, who might have looked at uh, tiling window managers uh, thinking, hey, it's uh, tiling window managing workflow looks really interesting and I would kind of want to use that but it feels like yeah you invest so much into a window manager and the all of these they seem a little bit like toy projects uh, I, I can see how people especially like professional developers and programmers and stuff might might think that and they are not uh, wrong in most cases but now i3 here really proves that the um, they they have created a, a stable product that is like feature full or whatever and it will it will um, you could rely on uh, on it working the same you should be able to use it for many years without anything changing or breaking you don't need to change any config files and stuff like that and i think this will uh, make so that yeah more professional, in quotation mark, uh, uh, users will start using i3. <laughs> and i3, uh, maybe it's not true that true now, but there were, uh, for a long time, i3 was considered like the beginner's uh, uh, window manager. And then when you have, when you know how i3 works, then you can kind of try, maybe try BSPWM. When, then when you have uh, finished uh, that stage, you know, then you can use DWM. It's, it, but it's very, maybe not start there because you have to, you have to patch the source code manually. You know, it's very complicated. Maybe start with i3 maybe, but it is really, don't post any screenshots or anything because, you know, it's a bit, uh, I, I always found that a bit funny that it is considered uh, a beginner's uh, window manager like that because it is it is actually a quite complicated workflow in i3 since it is a, this uh, manual uh, tiling window manager. It is not super easy to get to, to start using it for real. It is very easy to start i3. You just install it, start it and it works. It always just works. You might have to change the font in the config file because I think the default font often doesn't work on some distributions and stuff like that. I don't know why they don't use monospace as the default font instead they have some other font. I, I think that's the case. I, I don't, don't remember. But I've seen many, 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 many posts on this subreddit with people that with unreadable fonts the first time they install it. But that's more or less the only thing you might have to, to change. And then it works. The, the default configuration file is very sane, uh, except for the JKL semicolon navigation, but whatever. Let's not talk about that. Uh, and um, it's really easy to start with. And, and we also have this uh, the famous uh, Codecast uh, tutorial that so many people have watched. Um, Let's see if we can find it. It's probably the most watched, uh, uh, like, rising tutorial. Codecast i3. Here, you know, these, th these, uh, we, and they are excellent. It's amazing. It's like 600,000 views on this uh, setting up i3. Uh, it's very uh, and it is a very good uh, tutorial. It's actually this was a big inspiration for me starting uh, starting the YouTube channel. I think I mentioned this before. I remember when I watched this uh, when I was a, a young bud, you know, uh, and I thought they were so good. And I got my I, this is how I set up i3 myself the first time. I watched this tutorial and I followed it and I got i3 working. And now five years later, I'm still using it. Um, 
But I also, uh, as soon as the tutorial was over, I felt, hey, this was really, really comfy to watch this guy setting up his window manager, adding some icons to his status bar and stuff like that. That was comfy. That was very comfy. I want to, I want to do that as well. And I wouldn't be surprised, even if he would never admit it, that uh, Luke Smith uh, have had a similar experience. It doesn't matter. Th this is this is a great, and this is what you should show people if you, if uh, if they ask yeah, how to configure i3 or whatever. This is the best. It, it, it's very very good. And this also, it's five years old, but it's still completely valid, I believe. Maybe maybe one or two things that I, I, no i think it's valid I, i'm not 100 percent sure but i think all of this is valid today as well uh, and that also shows how <laughs> boring the release uh, scheme for uh, i3 is and how th that they basically don't change the software and that is becoming more and more known so and i also see i3 uh, used by people not just posting uh, their NeoFetch on, on Unix porn or something like that, you know. And I, uh, I would really like to recommend this video. Uh, I watched it a couple of days ago. Uh, me and 58 other people watched this amazing presentation here, really. You should really watch this. Not because he uses i3. He might also use Sway. I'm not 100% sure because it's impossible to, to tell the difference on a video like this, but I believe it's i3. It doesn't matter. It, that's not the point, really, uh, or it's a little bit of the point. But uh, this guy, now th this is like a, a little bit off topic here. But this dude, uh, Florian Merkel, I believe is uh, German. He have uh, uh, reverse engineered uh, the PlayStation 4 remote play. And what uh, PlayStation 4 Remote Play is, it's an application that you can install on Windows uh, to stream your PlayStation 4 to your uh, Windows PC. And then you can also play games. Uh, so the games are playing on the, on the PS4. It uses the, the CPU and stuff on the PS4, but you can play the game because it's streaming to your local PC over network. So both the... Uh, uh, wired and Wi-Fi works, I guess. But it's only available for Windows, and he also explains that it is not. It's actually not that good on Windows. There are some annoy annoyances, and I don't really understand why you would do that. If you have a PS4, why not just play it on the TV and not stream? Whatever, but whatever, you can do that. And this guy, uh, he reverse engineered that closed source uh, software and built uh, a clone of it uh, that works on Linux, but it also works on other platforms. There are people who have ported his version to Nintendo Switch, for example, so you can stream PS4 games to a Nintendo Switch. It's uh, kind of cool. Um, but the interesting thing here with this in this presentation is that he, he shows uh, very quickly and very elegant how uh, a bit of the reverse engineering process and that is it's the best uh, presentation I've seen on reverse engineering like this it it, it kind of it really you you kind of get <laughs> how it works of course I, I'm not a reverse engineering uh, guy after watching this but I kind of aha that's that's uh, <laughs> That's the mindset and that is what you're doing, you know, and, and the, he, he explains very well how the programming language, this program that the reverse engineers is uh, written in C++. So by knowing the, how classes and virtual functions and stuff uh, are lined out in a C++ program, then you, it, it, that, that helps you a lot when you uh, reverse engineer and stuff. It's, such a good presentation. I really, really, really recommend this. And, you know, you can be one of one of 58 lucky people to watch this. Uh, it, it was on uh, DebConf videos, like the Debian conferences stuff. They, they put up a lot of, of presentations. Most of them, maybe not for me, but this one, for some reason also, I, I never watched these uh, presentations from DebConf, but 
I, I just want to see what what is this PlayStation 4 remote? Maybe you can you know. And it was was so good this presentation and so impressive. This guy he also I I, I don't know, but he he he's definitely not older than me. He he looks like he is in uh, maybe 20, 20, 25 years old. Uh, Max, I, I I don't know, but he is very good uh, at the reverse engineering. Uh, and I think I think it says so in in the beginning here that he is uh, a student. So whatever, yeah, there computer science student at the Technical University of Munich. So I have no idea how we have uh, managed to. Uh, do this on his spare time while studying uh, and stuff like that uh, because he have spent a lot of time even if he's really good at it he it took him one year to reverse engineer the, the program this is very difficult stuff to do and, and time consuming um, and i think it was just interesting that you could see the the process but it was also it, it it got you think that you know there is no closed source when you have this guy's skills, then there is no closed source. That's uh, that's something to think about, actually. Um, so that's the recommendation, and he also uses i3 in the video um, in this presentation, and he he not he he uses it really uses it like changes the layout uses tabs and stacked layout and he very effortlessly do so without any weird hacks like i do i uh, assume uh, and you can really do that if you know what you're doing uh, and it's great at that and it's really really fast i3 uh, switching between these different layouts and arranging the windows and it's also very stable compared to other window managers. Another guy I know uses i3 is uh, Tsoding, who is mostly active on um, Twitch. Uh, he is also a, a, a really fun guy and a great programmer, a great, very entertaining uh, uh, um, coding stream. So probably my favorite streamer to watch like this just even if i is one of those you don't have to follow what he's doing he's he, because he's he's also very funny uh, and now he's also he have shaved his head so he looks like an eggman and that's also funny or maybe not funny it's it's whatever he can have whatever hair style he wants i don't know now the scrolling broke here now it works here you can see he doesn't have that long hair anymore, but he also uses i3 and he, he is very much not a beginner uh, <laughs> a computer user. He did advent of code every day in a new language that he had no experience in. So like he shows a computer language that he have, had never worked in for every day he did this. That's you have some some kind of programming skill and and. Uh, computing experience when you can do that on stream like this uh, yeah highly recommend his advent of code uh, uh, solutions uh, and soding in general I, I know he have a YouTube channel but they don't post that much on YouTube um, soding and then let's see yeah, here is this. So I guess I can recommend this because maybe you don't want to be on Switch at all or, or Twitch. I try to avoid Twitch. Uh, uh. But yeah, whatever. He also uses i3. What I want to get to is that uh, i3 is definitely not the beginner's uh, uh, tiling window managers. It's, it's actually the opposite. But it also works for beginners. It's like that meme, you know, with the uh, sub 100 IQ and the over 130 IQ guy shaking hands, you know. Uh, and then you have uh, <laughs> uh, big boy, big boy 100 IQ and 120 IQ using like DWM and DSPWM, you know, and then we use 
uh, uh, I3. It's a, it's the meme in real life. Uh, and then people are starting to understand this and that's... Uh, I, knew, I knew it would happen. Uh, and it feels like it's happening now, especially with this Reddit post and stuff like that. And then maybe the best proof of all. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, um, ESR gets uh, build computer I don't know if you have seen this oh soy soy overdose okay building a computer for Eric S. Raymond there it is. Okay, so these guys, the Tech Syndicate, this is an old video. Where did you opportunities like this present themselves? Uh, six years ago, January 1, 2015, they built a computer for the legend uh, Eric S. Raymond, which is, he's also a quite good programmer uh, and important person in open source uh, world. He actually invented uh, or coined the phrase open source, I believe. Look what Window Manager is using. <laughs> He's using i3. Using i3, the beginner, beginner, baby, noob, noob Window Manager, you know. So, yeah, whatever, a bit of a rant here. Uh, but i3 is stableware now. Uh, and... Um, I, I predict a quite big uh, um, in increase uh, of professional users and that will also of course mean that a lot of people who want to look like because fake it till you make it is, is a thing you know so I think i3 this year will have a massive increase in users actually uh, a lot of the new users will probably leave when they realize that, uh, hey, it's not really a beginner's uh, uh, window manager and they will not add any of the feature requests and stuff like that. But a lot will also stay. And I, I think i3 will become like the uh, tiling window manager for Xorg. Maybe the last one, you know, or of course not, but because that's what will kill i3 in the end, is uh, Xorg uh, not being supported. I have no idea when, if or when that will happen, but uh, I, I don't think it will be this year. <laughs> I don't think... Whatever, I don't want to talk about Wayland, whatever, and Sway. Uh, because for Xorg to die, I think Sway or, or Wayland first have to die before a new replacement for Xorg can start <laughs> can start uh, take, uh, taking being developed. Because Wayland is clearly not the Xorg killer. Uh, I think it's quite clear now and. Uh, Whatever, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. And I also don't know enough to talk about it. Except that it's been like in alpha stage for 15 years. Like uh, Wayland is soon older than Xorg was when Wayland <laughs> was presented. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Tech news, one month old tech news on the Bud Labs channel. See you in the next video, bye bye.